Hello class and welcome back to my course on AP Computer Science Principles. Today we are once again continuing our discussion of compression by looking at this Khan Academy assignment on lossy versus lossless compression. Let's take a look. First question. Consider these two files, a one minute video of a cat pouncing ferociously on a twisty tie and a download of The Lion King, a 1.5 hour animated film. Is it possible for The Lion King to have a smaller file size than the shorter cat video? Now, I know that the intuitive answer is no, of course not. It's 90 minutes long. It's got to have a bigger file size than a one minute cat video, but that's not necessarily true. I could have a cat video in the absolute highest definition possible, and that could be a tremendously large file size, whereas you could probably fit all of the Lion King into a really small file if you're willing to make it really tiny and really crappy. So I would say that yes, it is possible if the Lion King video is compressed with a lossy compression algorithm. Nora is learning to use image editing applications and doesn't understand when to lower the quality setting for JPEG saving. Now, just in case you aren't aware, JPEG is one of the very common file types um, associated with images. So a lot of images that you come across online are probably JPEGs. So what's a good case for using a lower quality setting? Well, Saving photos that you want to print out in frame, I would say no. I don't want to lose any detail whatsoever if I'm planning on putting a picture into a frame and like putting it up on my wall. Saving a photo of a textbook for easy reading offline, again, I would not want to use a lower quality setting for that because if I'm taking a picture of a book, I'm gonna to need to be able to zoom way in so I can actually read the words, so I wanna preserve as much of that detail as possible. Saving a photo of a multi-line bar graph with small text labels. Again, I would need a magnifying glass to be able to read those, and depending on the compression, I might not be able to read them at all, right? If those letters are really, really small, then when I do a lossy compression on it, it might just merge all those letters into little blobs of color, and then I've lost that. So by process of elimination, we're looking at D, saving a thumbnail that will link to a full-size version. Now that makes sense. You don't need a perfect, ridiculously high definition image if it's just gonna show up very tiny on the screen for them to click on and lead to the actual file. In fact, here on YouTube, the maximum file size that a thumbnail can be is 25 megabytes. And because of that, I often find myself having to compress my files so that I can make the thumbnails for this very series. Anyway. Enough of that, let's move on. Tom is recording an album of songs using a digital audio recording application, and he wants the recordings to be high quality. He should save the audio using a lossless compression algorithm. That's pretty much where I'm gonna stand here. The only way that you can preserve all of the details is with a lossless compression algorithm. He should save the audio using lossy at high quality setting. No, even with high quality lossy compression, you're still losing something or else it's not lossy. He should save the file using an open standard. We didn't even really talk about what open standard is. It just means a method of compression that is publicly available. He should add metadata to the file with the title, artist, and genre. Adding metadata is the opposite of compression, right? Metadata just means, well, exactly what it says here. Things like when you pull up a file, it'll show you what the title is of the song, what's the artist who wrote it, what genre of music it is, that sort of thing. But that's not compression. That's the opposite of compression. It makes the file bigger, not smaller. And finally, he should save the file on a USB drive, not on his internal hard drive. That doesn't make the file any bigger or smaller, right? Saving it on an external drive doesn't actually mean it's been compressed any more or less. Our answer is definitely A, save the audio using a lossless compression algorithm. All right, last question. The following processes are used by video compression algorithms. Categorize each process as lossless or lossy. So as a quick, quick review, remember that lossless means that it can restore the original exactly with as much detail as the original had from whatever file you gave it. Whereas lossy means that there is some level of detail that has been permanently lost and can't be recovered. 
Interframe coding. Instead of storing a pixel for every frame, the computer stores the differences between the pixels. Now, because we haven't explicitly talked about this yet, this could be a really confusing question, but if you take the time to really think about it, we should be able to come to the answer. So normally you would expect if you have a row of pixels, each one would have a particular code for the color of that pixel. And you could store it just by a big list of codes for the color of each one. But if you knew that one pixel was only like, I don't know, plus three away from another pixel, if the two codes were really close to each other, instead of storing the other pixel, you could instead just say that last one plus three or plus 12, or minus a million, or whatever. You could, instead of listing each pixel one at a time, you could start with the first pixel and then tell the computer what it has to add or subtract to get to the next pixel. That's not going to lose any detail whatsoever so long as it's done accurately. I'm gonna call this lossless, and we'll see if I'm right at the end. Entropy coding. The computer replaces frequently occurring patterns of bits with shorter representations, remembering the replacements in a table. This is exactly what we did with the Taylor Swift song. This is exactly what we did with the Dr. Seuss poem. This is lossless so long as it remembers the replacements on a table. If somehow that table is lost, then there's no translating it back. Finally, subjective field of interest. The computer detects when a person is the focus of the video game and stores less information about the background. In other words, if you're up close to a character, it might blur the background a little bit so that it can devote more processing power to rendering the face that's right in front of you. That is definitely lossy. So I believe we're looking at lossless, lossless, and lossy. Excellent, not bad. Now, even after this three-part series on lossless and lossy compression, I imagine a bunch of you are still gonna be confused. I'm gonna go ahead and leave links to a few more videos in the description that might help you take your next steps towards understanding these ideas. And please also do remember that I do my best to answer any questions that are made in the comments of these videos. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.